Hello and welcome to the big picture. What do the by-elections for which the results came yesterday indicate? Is there a trend which can be deciphered from it? 33 seats to the assembly across six states, including 11 in Madhya Uttar Pradesh, had witnessed the by-elections apart from three Lok Sabha seats. While the three Lok Sabha seats returned the same parties which held the seats earlier, the 33 assembly constituencies out of which 32 results are available have surprised everyone. The BJP, which had held 24 of the 33 seats, lost 14 of them with Uttar Pradesh bringing the biggest shock. Even in Gujarat and Rajasthan, Congress gained at the cost of the BJP. Before the by-elections, much was debated about the communal polarization in the form of the so-called love jihad being made a major issue, especially in Uttar Pradesh. Allegations of other divisive methods being employed was also heard. Now with these results, which saw Samadwadi party regaining a lot of lost ground, it is being said that efforts at communal polarization has been defeated. We will discuss today what the results mean for the political parties, especially the BJP, and whether the polarization efforts have really failed and that it would hold for future also. To discuss this, I have with me Dr. Subramanian Swami, BJP leader, Professor Mushir Al Hassan, a distinguished historian, Sanjay Kumar, sephologist and director at the Center for the Study of, Social, of Developing Societies, the CSDS, and Sabha Nakwi, political editor of the Outlook magazine. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Sanjay, I would like to come to you first. This is the third by-elections which are, which are being held after the May 2014 Lok Sabha elections. You know, we had a discussion sometime back also when the second round of by-elections were held. And uh, do you now, can you now say that there is a decipherable trend? So one big trend I can see from these by-elections and if I compare it with the Lok Sabha election, voters in India are making a clear distinction between the vote for Lok Sabha elections and vote for assembly election and in this case vote for the by-elections. In the Lok Sabha election, yes, there was a fascination for or an attraction for Narendra Modi and there was a big vote for BJP. But that seems not to be working in the state assembly elections, the by polls which has held in various states over last two, three months. So that's a big trend that voters have made a clear distinction. This is not a Lok Sabha election. They have voted for BJP. They have voted for Narendra Modi in the Lok Sabha election. This is a local election. This is a state assembly election by poll. So they have to look for the local needs and don't care much about whether they are voting for BJP or they are voting for Modi. Dr. Swami, would you agree with that? Well, broadly, I do agree. The question is that this phenomenon we have seen elsewhere when... Uh, 1980, Mrs. Gandhi got 350 seats in Lok Sabha, a two-thirds majority, and uh, roundedly, soundly defeated uh, MGR's party, who got zero seats in, uh, in the uh, parliament election. But very soon, two months later, there was an uh, assembly election because the uh, ADMK government was dismissed by Mrs. Gandhi's government. And uh, that, uh, in that election, we found that uh, the ADMK came with two-thirds majority in the assembly. And the Congress was routed and the, much of the other seats went to the DMK. Now, uh, we saw this with Devrajars and Mrs. Gandhi also. Uh, and there is a uh, definite um, uh, question of climate. Here, uh, in the case of the uh, Lok Sabha elections, there was the question who's going to form the government and Modi seemed to be the most attractive for the public. And uh, there were other factors, uh, the anti-corruption campaign, and also, the uh, Carter was totally mobilized on the grounds that if we get majority, we would be able to implement the Hindutva, uh, Hindutva agenda. And uh, now, when it came to the assembly election, I would say that there are pockets where the, this, was, this Hindutva had a, played a role. The three Muzaffar Nagar seats we got uh, were, uh, were uh, because of that factor. So, uh, the single seat we got, um, first time entry through Silcha, uh, in West Bengal was also based on the Hindutva factor. And uh, in Gujarat, I would say there was certainly uh, the Congress got three seats, but the, the proportion of six to three is much better than what Modi did in 2013 assembly elections. The, he got a lower proportion uh, of BJP seats compared to the Congress seats. So uh, I would say it's the UP uh, uh, by elections, which uh, took us by surprise, and I think we have started the process of analysis. Preliminary analysis say a certain amount of dissatisfaction with the electorate and the worker that uh, we haven't brought the prices down. 
uh, the workers were little uh, sore that the uh, we speak about Hindutva, but we have not taken any steps. Uh, so, and on black money, we hadn't brought it back. These are the three things that the workers have conveyed well, to us. Very interesting, uh, Dr. Swami. Hindutva, let us stick to Hindutva. The other two things are quite understandable to everybody. You're saying that the Hindutva card, are you, are you saying that the Hindutva card did not work despite the best efforts of your party? No, in the, we, the Hindutva campaign of uh, Aditya Nath and others was concentrated on uh, in the Muzaffar Nagar seats. In the other seats, uh, we did not. Uh, oh, it was a deliberate. It, it was a deliberate strategy no, it was to not. concentrate it was, on Muzaffar because Nagar. Because uh, Muzaffar Nagar was a issue. Uh, there was a issue there. There have been riots. The, the government had mismanaged it, and there were uh, uh, this love jihad issue. There were a number of issues, and uh, therefore the entire campaign was on that. In the other seats, the campaign was much broader. So, you, you, do, will you, would you admit that the, that entire campaign has failed? Lao Jihad is not any... I was, at least the people uh, have rejected no, it. No, the voters no, have rejected no, no, it. No, would you no, say no, that? No, no you no. won't say I, that? I, I'm not so sure that... Uh, I, I cannot agree to that because I'm saying that where we concentrated on the Hindutva campaign, we have uh, got the results. Bengal was purely on Hindutva. And on uh, these three seats in Muzaffar Nagar, it was on Hindutva. Was an Hindutva, but it did not work. No, no. In Muzaffar Nagar, we got all the three seats. You're talking. Okay. Uh -huh. So you are saying that only Muzaffar Nagar, apart uh, other parts of other the, parts, other we parts did not, of we other did not parts campaign of, uh, on UP, that. You did not we, we did campaign, campaign on Hindutva. No. So you are say, still saying that polarization works. It will work if it's uh, the uh, the occasion is right. For example, now it will work if we implement some of the Hindutva agenda. If we'll we come, don't, we then will come, uh, people we will, will come. We will come to what your Hindutva yeah. agenda is. Professor, Professor Mushir Lassan, this is a very interesting argument which of uh, Dr. Subraman Swami. He says that despite what, whatever the results have, we have we we have witnessed in Uttar Pradesh, especially Hindutva still works. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't celebrate Hindutva, and obviously, uh, in his intervention, there is this celebration of Hindutva, which is a rather uh, ominous thing, uh, but uh, I'm not very certain if we can draw too many bald conclusions uh, from the verdict of the electorate. I think it's, it's satisfying, comforting to realize that the BJP, at least for me, that the BJP has not done as well as it was expected to do. Uh, but whether the verdict is against Hindutva or not, is, is an altogether different uh, proposition. And if there are people who are determined, for example, in the next round to use Hindutva as a he card... He is not making any bones about it. Yeah, so, so th therefore... Do it in Maharashtra, I, for example. I, I, they will do it in Maharashtra. <laughs> no, let them, let them try, but let them try. But there are important lessons to be drawn, I think, from this election. Lessons to be drawn by the secular political formations in this country. I think if, for example, Malayam Singh Yadav uh, decides sir, sir, to we take... Will, we'll okay, come, we'll come, we'll come to, to that. that aspect later, you know, what it means. Sabah, how do you react to this? I do think you think... No, no, you, 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 have, you have been traveling in those places, you're talking to people and things like that. Would you agree with Dr. Subhan Sami? Because he has a, he has a yeah, solid point. He, has, he no, says no, no. that you know, in those I'm, three seats, we used the strategy and we have won. I have covered the BJP for 17 years. So, Dr. Swami, no disrespect, there, there is going to be a tussle within the BJP. Dr. Swami has always represented a, a line, a hard line within the party. Now, uh, we are talking about pragmatism. There is little doubt that the election, that there are two things which have emerged out of this verdict, according to two, three things. And uh, one of them is that uh, the uh, national mandate was for Mr. Modi, who did not campaign in this, Absolutely. right? He got, he got occupied with whatever, his, his uh, duties as a prime minister. No, as and, 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 and you, you, one, number, to, be fair, one, to, to be fair to him, usually my no, prime ministers don't not, campaign in no, bipoles. No, he, he, it was a national verdict. There was Mr. Modi and the way the campaign was able to generate a wave where a lot of the, the extra vote went there. Now you have a by-election which is managed by an individual which, who he called man of the match, Mr. Amit Shah. You had a very cynical use of a certain time. We, the BJP need not have bothered to do all of this, but you had the cadre out there doing all of this. They, they could have done it on what was promised, Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas, 
price is inflation, but there was undoubtedly a cynical use of uh, various uh, parivar outfit, love jihad, for everything po was for there. For polarization. For polarization. Clearly, it did not work. But let's not get, ca there's also uh, arithmetic, the BSP was not in the game right. also. And uh, so, th there are arithmetic. Now, it has three seats. Actually, it's uh, just to flesh out, if I'm not mistaken, where the BJP did win, I think Adityana did manage to campaign over there. This is going to be a debate. I actually, mean, actually, he actually campaigned he in seven constituencies where four they lost four, and three, three they won. Yeah. However, I don't think that the physical campaign these days is so important yeah, because so in important. any case, it's, it's, it's the sentiment that's being, Absolutely. it's not how many people turn up for your rally. I, I don't know whether Dr. So Sundaram Swami will agree with that, but you know, no, that I is... Believe, I believe that after this kind of drubbing, I think there will be an internal review in the BJP. I think either Mr. Modi will tell them to the 10-year moratorium, he will want it imposed now. But, however, the BJP has traditionally, this is not the first time this has gone wrong in UP. After Ram Mandir also, they gave up a certain, Absolutely. the whole thing fell flat. The souffle fell flat. A souffle, I mean, you can keep trying to make the souffle rise again and again. <laughs> it, gets, it can be, you, can, you have to cook up a new thing. I'm sure Dr. Swami is a very good chef and he must keep <laughs> trying in his kitchen. But the souffle has fallen flat. And now, let's see, in Maharashtra, you, of course, you have certain polarized identities for every election. We will come now, to Maharashtra. Now, how far you play it or not is we'll the We will come to Maharashtra issue. later. Sanjay, yeah. I want you to respond to this. This interesting theory which Dr. Subramaniam Swami comes out with, saying that, you know, nothing is lost. Wherever the strategy was used, we have, we have succeeded. Do you, do you, how, do you, how do you look at it? No, one thing is clear. See, uh, if we look at uh, the Lok Sabha elections and compare it with uh, these bi-poles, See, the, there is a dramatic change in Indian politics, as I can see. Uh, initial 50 years was anti-Congress. If you wanted to defeat Congress, all opposition party has to unite together. This is what has come out from the results of the bipoles. Look at what happened in Bihar when the two parties came together and there was a united front against BJP. BJP got the, uh, BJP couldn't win as many seats as they expected. And that is what has happened uh, practically in Uttar Pradesh. While there was no close understanding between SP and BSP because BSP was not in the fray. All the votes, anti-BJP votes got consolidated behind SP. And that is the one big reason for the defeat of BJP. And SP's vote share has gone up by 26% in these constituency. So this big, I can see this as a big change in Indian politics. If you want to oppose BJP or want to like uh, uh, corner BJP, then parties have to come together because BJP is now sitting with a sizable a uh, uh, sizable support base, which is in the range of say 30 to 32 percent. So in order to defeat BJP, parties have to come together and if... This has been, we witnessed yeah. this in Bihar also. Yeah. And now we are witnessing it here, in, in not in terms of uh, parties coming together, but parties staying out, you know, BSP staying out and the election seems to have made practical, some difference. Practical That's what, coming together of parties. Yeah, y yes. So uh, I, I wanted to say that in the light of the fact that just four months ago, there was this massive ideological campaign that was conducted by the BJP under the leadership of uh, Mr. Narendra Modi. The fact that, that so soon thereafter, uh, the BJP has not performed well in UP is itself, I think, very important. It's very important. Dr. Yeah. So, so, Subraman Swami, my question is this. Would you agree yeah. that with these re three rounds of bipoles bi in these last three, four months, and everywhere BJP has lost ground. So would you admit that the Narendra Modi wave has abated? I'm not sure about that. We would say Narendra Modi's wave is abated, but there is definitely a criticism that we have not delivered on the promises that we made, at least some steps. And I think black money seems to have figured a lot. <laughs> Uh, same you thing. Think, are are the people in rural areas, you know, remote rural areas, bothered about? Yes, yes, black yes. Men? Don't don't underestimate <laughs> the rural areas. They, you know, they they are concerned. They they are uh, they are facing corruption in a, a, every day in every part of India. And I would like I'd like to say one thing. You see, in Rajasthan, Vasundhara made it very clear: no Hindutva. She in fact sent out instructions. It was a purely on the basis of uh, of how Congress, how bad Congress was. And we came a cropper in uh, in, in, in Rajasthan, Rajasthan, complete cropper. I yes, there was some sudden uh, policies let him, let him, let him of labour and all. No? Let, him, let him finish, Sabal. Well, whatever the, the the issue is that the uh, what uh, in the national elections we managed to do is we broke the caste barriers. People voted across the castes, and uh, how, 
you, to, you know, as far as Rajasthan is concerned, you're saying that she kept Hindutva yeah, campaign absolutely. out and that is why this result has come. What about well, Gujarat? I'm not, uh, what about uh, Gujarat? Uh, no, in Gujarat, I don't think we have, we have done badly. Six out of the nine, I think, is pretty good. No, but you lost three seats there. You are saying that every seat that BJP won must re-win uh, re it. You don't, you don't, I don't, I don't, don't agree think it's it depends on the choice of, you know, elections are also a very complex process. The question of candidates, the question of uh, lo local situations, uh, so on. But I would say that if there are nine seats, you go to polls, uh, they were all BJP seats, of course. But uh, it also depends on whether that MLA did his work, whether there was dissatisfaction. Obviously. So Ob all, all that yeah. is uh, going to be a factor. Obviously. But six out of nine... I think was a very in, impressive performance. So, but in yes, Gujarat, yes, if, you, if you look at uh, the vote estimates, the Congress has managed to increase its votes by 15% and BJP's yes, vote share has gone down by 11. Yes. So there is a huge Dr. decline Swami, in BJP's That's a voters. huge number, 15%. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to my question. So is this, isn't this a clear indication that the Modi wave is abating? Well, suppose, to, just hypothetically, suppose tomorrow we win Maharashtra, we will have the debate, uh, the parameters Absolutely. of the we'll debate have the debate whether the <laughs> wave, was, wave was there, you know, there has been a revival of the wave. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, I, I would say that therefore, uh, the initial comment made out by our expert here was something worth remembering that these are by-elections and there is no urgency of who's going to form the government. There's no feeling that uh, there are big stakes involved. I don't know whether uh, we should take this as a lesson for us to moderate our ideology. So you don't think there is a need to moderate your ideology? No. And you think that you were talking about the Hindu, the strategies for the Maharashtra elections and yes. the Haryana elections. Yes. The, you, you think that the BJP should continue to uh, have this uh, Hindutva strategy, only Hindutva strategy will work. Is that what you're trying to say? Well, BJP because won't have, your, won't your have remark to work. on Rajasthan. B, BJP won't, Maharashtra won't have to work very hard because Shiv Sena will take the lead in this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pro Professor Hassan, eh? you know, if this is the what is the, you are you are talking of the challenge before the secular parties. If 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 the BJP listens to Dr. Swami's advice and you know continue and and takes up the same kind of stand which he expects the party to take, what is, what is the alternative for other parties? I don't know. What I happened in Uttar Pradesh is a very very unusual thing because BSP did not contest election. We we can't expect them not to contest elections in future also. Well, I mean, as Sanjay was quite rightly pointing out, that one alternative is for the opposition, for the secular parties to unite. And if the Bihar experience works out and works out nicely, then obviously that that is that is an alternative, and that alternative can be worked out at the national level. The other thing is that I do not think that as of now, the Indian electorate is necessarily prepared for another round of communal onslaught. So maybe, maybe in Maharashtra, uh, because of the Shiva Sena and because of the poor performance of the Congress government, Hindutva might work. But if another set of elections were to take place at the national level or even in some of the states, I doubt if Hindutva will strike a chord. Uh, Sabha, how, how know, do you I think? think uh, look, uh, the general elections. Uh, I want I want you to answer two questions. One, what uh, you know, response to what he says, and the second thing is, Dr. Subramanian Swami's advice. How much that will it be taken okay. within the BJP? No, no. And and you know what what, what do you think? Okay. Since the last twenty four hours yes. of the of the results coming in, what is the mood in the within the BJP? No, no, there is definitely going to be a rethink. I've been, uh, there's going to be a rethink about when you overplay the hand. It has happened to them before also. Right. Right? Now, what was what was the purpose of going on this Hindutva overdrive in Western UP? You didn't want to take a chance. There was overconfidence. You wanted to ensure what was the new social group that came to you, a section of Dalits came. You wanted to ensure that they also remained there. and But actually, the evidence suggests they did not. So this drifting board has moved away. So, uh, the one, number one, they, 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 I, I mean, the data is not there and Sanjay is much better equipped, but this is, suggestion is they did not. So, the idea is to whip up why are polarizing techniques uh, used. It is to consolidate people against someone else, is to keep them together. These are the emotional issues, as the BJP states it. I would like to also say something, uh, you know, divert a little bit from uh, what uh, uh, Mushir Bhai is saying. You know, even secularism is not that all the Indian parties are beholden to following strategies which would keep the BJP out of power. People don't think like that. Parties look out for self-interest. 
they look out to survive. Nobody but, is but there to say what, secularism. How, how do you, how do you, no. how do you, how do you, now, how, how do you look at what happened is, in Bihar? No, no, Bihar no. was a, was no. a clear case no. of anti-BJP anti polarization. to keep each other alive. Yeah, it is not for, I, I don't, I don't believe any of them have any idealism. Mayawati <laughs> in the future, she will decide whether it suits her to keep alive with Mulan Singh Yadav or uh, because the BJP is going heavily for a Dalit uh, offensive, uh, you know, the, uh, so the, uh, the Sarsang Chalak spoke yeah. in favour of reservation. Yeah. I don't think the Mr. Swami... The most militant Hindus are the Dalits the, actually. You know, <laughs> and uh, Dr. Swami is not wrong. I mean, they have uh, even Gujarat and some of the violence, they were in the forefront Absolutely. of various things. So what, what is significant here is, uh, is what the parties think will be in their self-interest. That is how politics will play out. In Maharashtra, we are going to have a very conventional anti-incumbency election. I don't think the BJP uh, Sena years. will even need to do things which <laughs> require too much of a hard line. It is just automatically, it will be a conventional kind of an it's election. A conventional 15 years, years of anti-incumbency. May I add one thing? Yes. Uh -huh. First of all, I don't agree with the impression that our only plank is going to be Hindutva. If we don't perform on corruption, if we don't perform on this governance thing, if we don't uh, perform on uh, the issues which uh, uh, concerns uh, daily uh, uh, problems of the public. The price. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, Hindutva will not get priority. Hindutva is that uh, topping uh, to, the, uh, to this to basic the cake. thing. Yeah, so when Narendra Modi came with this, uh, yes, that's right. You may say souffle, but I say cake. Uh, uh, both the Western um, uh, dishes. Uh, now, the thing is, when Narendra Modi came, Hindutva became the, that extra 10% which made the difference. Uh, so, uh, I would never say advocate that we only do Hindutva. No, my, my another question but, to you, Dr. Swami, is this. Huh? The, the next round of assembly elections, which is going to happen in Maharashtra and Haryana first yes. and later in Jammu and yes. Kashmir and other, Jharkhand. But my question is, will Narendra Modi be a vote catcher in the assembly elections in the, in the way he, he was in the, in the Lok Sabha election? No, you see, the formation of government where there is, he will definitely campaign. For instance, Maharashtra, he will definitely campaign. Because there is a question of government formation. Same thing in, in Haryana. Although Haryana, the caste... Uh, 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 Haryana BJP has not very, done very well strong. for a long time. Huh? BJP's problem has, has he, had problems. I agree, because we are not able to deal with this question of this uh, caste, uh, caste issue yeah. there. And it's very strong this time. And I think uh, Mr. Chotala has uh, managed to create a jat uh, uh, psychology. Uh, but uh, I don't know between now and the election whether there will be any change. But as far as Maharashtra is concerned, we think that A, the Congress's terrible performance, plus this Hindutva combined will give us majority, not only a handsome majority. And you, you, we will find the Prime Minister actively campaigning. Uh, he will, because it's a government formation. He, yeah, who, who do you think is going to be the Chief Minister? Uh, let me ask you. <laughs> no, I don't what think, do you think should I, Sabha, I don't straight. think that's a question you should, he yeah, can answer okay. or you should I ask him also. I can answer and make and enemies. I don't, I don't want make, him to. And make enemies. <laughs> Okay. No, I don't know whether you, you, you have made enough enemies. I don't think you, you have, you yeah, have a problem with that. that uh, <laughs> can I just... Yes. It yes, seems to me that, uh, as Mr. Swami just rightly pointed out, that the, the, uh, the BJP has drawn the necessary mileage uh, in the last election. Right. And now there is a government, a very powerful government in place with 262, 72 seats. 82 seats, sir. 82, 82. seats. What then is the great advantage or how pragmatic is it then uh, for the BJP to press on this Hindutva agenda and to do what, as he points out, to do what they did in Muzaffarnagar or to do what Avadhyanath and others are trying to do. And what is the great advantage that you are likely to draw except to, in fact, in a certain sense, divert or distract your development plans. Okay, uh, I'll let, I'll let answer him answer that. that. You know? Let him answer, answer that. that. Yes, please. See, we have drawn, we have analyzed and drawn a lesson on why India shining failed with Mr. Vajpayee. Right. It's perhaps uh, he, the he, campaign. He, he he qualified to be even secular by her, your standards, I think. Uh, and he, you know, it was uh, India was doing quite well. We in by elections we were doing very well. Suddenly he advanced the election, thinking this is the most appropriate time to. Right. The worker did not come out. To bring the workers out and make them work in an enthusiastic way, we need this. In the you think that a, an emotional issue 
a divisive issue, a mm. polarizing issue is what will bring the BJP uh, worker out? I don't agree it's a divisive issue or polarizing issue because we are 80% Hindu. I agree and, with, and I agree with what a, Dr. Swami is saying that the worker needs, needs some needs ideological kind of, issue. This is a but now the, the, the challenge before the BJP leadership is to calibrate that and manage that right. carefully. Absolutely. Where right. it doesn't, where it doesn't re, uh, repulse or put off others. It, it, but as opposed it, to getting the worker charged up. It, it cannot supersede the governance uh, uh, thing, issue. There. Dr. Swami is saying um, it really militates against the spirit, the essence of our constitution. <laughs> it is against our democratic traditions. It is against composite culture. It is against all the values that we have stood for. For the last 70 years. Absolutely. I don't think anybody can... Cha can so, uh, I, I'm sure even where, Dr. Swami will, will disagree with what you are saying. But where, and no, where, no. Where, where do no, you... No, we are talking no, about no, pragmatic no, no, no. no, no, he's talking it's about the, the Supreme I'm Court has very clearly said that uh, uh, advocacy of Hindutva is not, uh, uh, oh, not at all communal. Yeah, okay. Anyway, Sanjay, Sanjay, you know, we, we have little time left. I want to, you know, go to the Congress because... The Congress was decimated in the Lok Sabha elections, even after the, you know, but in the last three rounds of bipoles, they seem to have got some oxygen. You think that this is something which they can hold on to? So, uh, again, I would go by the same logic which I, uh, the debate I started with. This is, there is no national trend of revival of the Congress. These are, again, local issues. But, yes, there is some uh, thing to celebrate within the Congress because their vote share has gone up at least in Rajasthan, Gujarat. How uh, much has it gone up in Rajasthan? In Rajasthan, it has gone up by 14-15 percent. And the, the important point is that the increase of vote share of the Congress is higher compared to the decline in the vote share of BJP. So it's not that BJP's votes have shifted to Congress only. They managed to pull votes from other parties also, smaller parties or independents. So that's only the positive sign for the Congress. But I can't see that this is a national trend of revival of the Congress. Sabha? No, I don't. I agree entirely with what he's saying. There's no revival. One of the things, I don't know how much time you have, Girish. One of the important results was in Bengal, actually, where you showed Absolutely. where is the left? <laughs> the gone. No, no, but and the BJP has opened its Dr. account. Dr. In fact, in fact uh -huh. Sanjay, I want you to. What that is happening in Bengal? Uh -huh. What's the, do you do you agree with uh, Dr. Swami that you know Hindutva is taking over uh, in Bengal at least to some extent? No, is I that, would is say, that a Hindutva vote which no, got no, BJP? No, I would say. There? I would say Hindutva as a strategy would work if BJP is facing a divided opposition. Yeah. As soon as BJP is facing a united opposition, this is not going to work. Oh, yeah. And in Bengal, it was a divided opposition. There was a Congress, there was a Trinmool Congress and left. So it but, worked. But I, I think I, in Bengal, actually, the, uh, the BJP, one second, one second, the BJP candidate won by 1,500 1, votes, but still, votes. But still he won. And the I, issue, issue is not so much Hindutva. The issue is, uh, is immigration. Immigration of Bangladesh. Yeah, that is part of our Hindutva plan. That's what that no, but yeah, let me. Uh, it is I mean, I just isn't. just talking to some BJP people who are actually handling that state. Uh, it's uh, what what has happened is that uh, there is an anti mamta A lot of the forces coming to them. Plus, they are saying that there is now a division between the older older Muslim settlers and the new immigrants. And they have even had a lot of Muslims joining up. And no, nobody was trying to plant a story. I was probing what has been happening over there. So you're talking about various schism and, uh, uh, and Mamta is also facing a tough time. Mamta but is facing the, a tough the left is not there. Left is not you know, there. That's that is I mean, a significant we don't have anybody on the left in the panel. Yeah. That's a different, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm sure, a mm -hmm. different debate. Very quickly, Sanjay, and I want Dr. Swami also to respond very quickly on, uh, to, to this question. In, in Rajasthan and Gujarat, do the chief ministers, is, is it a warning to the two chief ministers? See, for any political party, if you lose seats in Rajasthan, it's a, I would say it's a big setback for the BJP. You lose f three out of four. So, definitely, right. there are concerns for the BJP leadership in Guj Rajasthan and Gujarat as well. Dr. Swami, very quickly. Yes, Hindutva is uh, topping. It's at the margin. It's very important. But uh, the essential governance um, has to be also... Okay, there. I think on that note, we need to end. It has been a very fruitful debate. Uh, and there are a lot of lessons for... All the political parties, I think, from what we have, uh, what my panelists have spoken today, we'll wait and watch as we go along how all the, the next round of elections in Maharashtra and uh, Haryana would be very interesting to watch. Thanks to all my guests, Dr. Subram Swami, Mushirul Hassan, Sabah Nakhvi, and Sanjay Kumar. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture, same time tomorrow.